welcome back today we are going to be discussing fifth generation network in nigeria and how far it has come recent data released by the nigerian communications commission underscores the growing adoption of fifth generation technology in nigeria revealing that the country's fifth generation subscriptions reached 2.3 million by the end of december 2023 Despite this significant milestone, fifth generation subscriptions constitute approximately 1.04% of the nation's overall active telephone service subscriptions, which stood at 224.7 million at the close of the year. Among the key players propelling fifth generation deployments in Nigeria are major mobile network operators such as MTN, Airtel, and Mafab Communications. These operators have played pivotal roles in expanding fifth generation services across the nation. However, certain challenges, including the elevated cost of fifth generation enabled devices, have contributed to a slower than anticipated adoption rate. With me today in the studio is Mr. John Emodi, an IT administrator, to discuss with us. Welcome to the show, Mr. John. Thank you very much. Welcome. So before we go into the challenges faced by the fifth generation in Nigeria, first I want to ask you, Beyond the better communication, what other um, benefits are we, are we to enjoy from fifth generation in Nigeria? Okay. Um, 5G as a technology enables other industries to come to play. So where you need um, faster communication speed across devices and industry, that's what 5G avails um, um, the, the, um, the, the economy. So people need to do things faster and that's why most is rolled out in populations and locations where they need it um, essentially. So 5G basically enhances the speed of communication by reducing latency and that's the major benefit it gives to the economy and to the industry. So I want to go into the tech space. What exactly would um, 5G um, communication do to the tech space in terms of development? Okay, so um, imagine you are creating um, application solutions for people to about their daily lives. Imagine you deploy the software and you have maybe 10 million people accessing that software on a server. How do how do you um, get that to them without much lag? 5G enables that, so you can offer services across board without having the um, fear or the concern that they won't get what they need per time. Sometimes you see rapid loading for a minute, two minutes. 5G can eliminate all those bottlenecks and let you um, utilize services and applications that you need in real time. So you've talked about the cons now. Let's go into the pros. You know, a lot of people have the belief that the fifth generation um, um, network is here to, you know, do a lot of evil harm to us. Some people have said it is a weapon and that it can be used to harm a lot of persons in Nigeria. How true are these? Yes, there's um, speculations came during the COVID era that was saying yes, it course. supports the, um, the spread of COVID and all the mental health challenges, but so far by the report by the World Health Organization and the EU and the UN also, they found out that that doesn't have any significant correlation to the health of people, that the effect of 5G millimeter wave doesn't have effect on the body, the um, tissues of human beings and other animals. So it's a debunked claim as, as such presently. So despite this debunking that the WHO has done, concerning the 5G. We've seen that the reachability of this network in all parts of Nigeria has been slow. What exactly do you think is the problem? Um, like I said earlier on, you have to find who needs it because it's costly to deploy you. It's, what does it take? Okay, it takes a lot of antennas, antennas and area to, to put and since it doesn't have wide coverage, you have to put a lot within a given area to cover that area. And since 5G has lim uh, limited penetration capabilities. If you put just blocks in front of it, it can um, reduce the signal quality getting to the other side. So you have to put a lot within the area to cover that area. So much more infrastructure is needed, unlike for the normal 2G, 4G, 3G, so that you just need one mass that covers a whole expanse of area. For 5G, you need much more hardware to hardware to do the same and get the same result. So, so, so that's one of the issues then we should then also, for consumers, they have to, um, upgrade their devices or get new devices that support those technology okay. and also like you also hinted that the cost of purchasing those um, devices might be uh, substantial to the end users 
Okay, so um, in terms of 4G, you were talking about antennas. Are we supposed to take out all of these antennas to replace them with that of 5G or some additions are just being made to them? That will happen maybe for the next decade for 5G to replace 4G because um, 4G is it's, it's much more widespread and statistically there are more devices on 2G in the country right now than mm -hmm. any other network over yes, 50% that down 2G good. right now so um, it, it takes time. So like uh, from the recent statistics that say just about 1% of users use 5G in the country right now. So um, yes, it's going fast since the deployment in late 2022, but I think there's a long way to go for 5G to surmount other network technologies. So what are the innovations are we looking at 5G bringing to us in Nigeria? Because a lot of people are still finding it hard to accept. Because if um, we've seen that 5G was, was brought into Nigeria in 2022, and for two years now, that's two years, almost two years, because it was around August, September, if we have a limited number of people who have accepted this network. So what are that? What do you think we should do? So, you know, like I said, people have to update their devices. So, um, imagine someone that bought a device in 2022 that's not 5G enabled. You wouldn't expect that person to buy within the next year again if, if they don't see 5G as a compelling need for their daily lives. So, first, the cost of purchasing new devices and the need to purchase devices. Then also, um, the, the coverage of the 5G um, network. So, right now, yes, within Abuja and suburb, we have significant 5G coverage, but that's not the state. It's the same for many states. In fact, it's just about 30 cities that have 5G connectivity. So I think that's one of the costs why its spread has been limited. So how do we get it to people? That's my question. So um, it, it has to be a structured thing. And the, 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 um, if the government can subsidize the cost of obtaining the devices and to purchase subscription for those services, I think that will play a long role in helping people to embrace the technology. Okay, so what other innovations are we looking at? Okay, so for example, um, I was in an MTN founder's meeting, I myself as a founder. MTN said, a company came to them and said, oh, we want technology to help in our inventory system. It's a fast moving, consumer good sector that have expanse of um, stock. And they said, okay, we can implement a 5G in a route that can run inventory into, in 5G into, uh, a drone that with a webcam that can scan the whole store what they do within a week that does it in two three hours enabled by 5g so 5g can help businesses if you know how to deploy it and helps you scale your your systems your procedures and your processes okay so i'd like you to simplify the difference because you know a lot of people would want to know what and what 5g entails because they want to know why it is being introduced to us so i'd like you to give us in details what the difference is we are currently on 4g what is the difference between the 4g network and the 5g network and why people should embrace it primarily speed it's speed so if you say most people don't really care about it that's why it hasn't spread as much as it needs to so if the speed is improved if um, you will feel the need to improve the um, speed of their um, daily um, engagement they have they will find the need to adopt 5g so basically i can say there's people that require high bandwidth of data or that use maybe other technology like fiber optics um, that will require 5G. So um, people on 4G right now that is um, convenient for them that just maybe social media and just check their mails, they might not necessarily need it. But if you have to uh, maybe send um, videos online or have to download large content and have to do it in real time, then you need 5G connectivity to get that um, up and running. So 5G, 4G, there is technology. You go what we, what we need and 5G is the future, but it's it's not yet present as it is right now for people to adopt in uh, in an accelerated manner. So, in terms of development and the infrastructure of 5G in Nigeria, the connectivity, do you think that Nigerian government are doing enough for it? Um, primarily, what the Nigerian government is doing is just issuing licenses, and I think it's just three companies that have that license to um, deploy 5G across the country. So. I think we, we we basically in Africa we are we are leading in 5G technology and even with um, the level of subscription we have also um, we are leading in the continent and I think that that is something to appreciate. But if within a year or two we've seen a ten growth of the 5G adoption from maybe 220,000 people in early 2023 to what many people right now. So I think um, if that trend continues, we can see much more.
drastic absorption of the technology. Okay, with the current network issues you're having in Nigeria, I'm sure you're aware of that sure, yourself. Sure. Um, would our networks get to a point where we would not need to have cables in subseas and then we'll be having issues with network in the yeah, future? Not, Do you not, think? Not, not in the foreseeable future. Almost all technologies still require on the cables to run run across board because cables are the backbone. So, um, except we are deploying technology like Starlink from Tesla, almost every other technology require cables to to enable. Yes. Yeah. So you must you see this cable running on the ground somewhere. Mm -hmm. So also the five G routers and antennas and the areas there are people running them. There are five G. Um, there are fiber optics cable conveying those data across board. So in a case like this, in this situation, if we're all already on five Gs. Would the situation would, uh, be better for it will us? assume the same outcome okay why yeah, because like i said five years will run on those um, fixed cables oh you're saying it would have still been the same, yes, outcome. The same outcome oh wow yeah. so why is that there's no how we can bring all of these things into something more um, palatable for us that it will not be cables that will be affected your you data have to transmit it one way physically or um, um, wirelessly so um um 5g there are antennas that broadcast the signal wirelessly, but it still connects through cables to um, to, um, to networks and routers at different layers to, to connect with the rest of the world. So I don't think that will change for the foreseeable future, except maybe more technology that is Starlink is adopted to help people just directly connect with um, satellites and um, go about their data needs. So we've heard that MTN and Airtel have been the one doing the most job for 5G connectivity in Nigeria. Why do you think it's just these two network providers? Why do you think others are not investing so much in 5G network in no, Nigeria? There was a bidding process and yeah, MTN and MAFAB became, they were successful the in the bid and later on Airtel was also granted a list to, 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 to deploy it. So I think that does it when, um, I think they do, they do that as an incentive so that people can get back their return on investment because if they put it out there because of the cost of those licenses are significant and if everybody gets it and they spend that much they might not get that within the period of time they, they expect so i think um the more licenses that we should have by the government the more companies will adopt it and start deploying it like i said it is not um it's not cheap to begin the deployment but over time it, it plays out okay um, another concern of nigerians are um their privacy people invading their privacy do you think 5g would invade invade people's privacies because you know those myths are out there and we need to correct their notions uh is 5g network going to invade on people's privacy um not really no but like i said okay, like it's known that no network is 100 percent safe no network 100 percent safe and besides since more net, more 5g antennas and um, um boosters will be needed people can have access to those um, um, locations and try to um, hack those systems but generally it's just as secure as every other technology out there and it is not a weapon to harm people no, no, no that's really it's not okay now looking at the generations of networks how soon or how how long do you think the 5g network would last in nigeria and how soon do you think another generation would be built okay actually the other generation already documented and designed six the six six generations already generation. designed and develop, developed but that won't come to play maybe for the next couple of years but 5g is just kicking up in this country and even in the whole continent so um 5g will be here for the next foreseeable future so 10 15 years we'll still be trying to get 5g into all the nooks and crannies of wow. the different regions of the continent and so how do you think we can catch up it, it's, it's time time is needed and the then also the need first of all it has to be rolled out to people that needs it then for it rolled out to people that want it like 4g2 came out to a few cities maybe lagos abuja port Harcourt, Kano. then for it goes into um, other um locations so 5g to also follow that trend people that need it then get to people that want it okay so um you but 4G was quite quite easy for us as Nigerians. It wasn't very difficult. So why is 5G very difficult at this stage? Because 5G requires a whole set of infrastructure. For the 4G, you can use your traditional 3D mast to run your 4G signal. But for mm -hmm. 5G, it has to have different antennas and areas to do that. So that, that's the reason why. Okay, so can that network be used to fight the security challenge we're facing in this country? Because it's a huge 
many needs we have in this country right yes, now. Yes, it, it, I think it can be deployed in the military and security apparatus to help um, improve surveillance. So, like as if if you're going to have drones that will surveil a given region, you can have um, drones that have um, connection to real time um, internet, so that you can get in feed after what happened per time and um, be able to use that to protect your areas or borders. So I think yes, you can easily play that into the security infrastructure. Mm. Aside from the network connectivity of it, what else do you think it would do for us? It, it's, 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 it's a simple technology just to improve the speed of communication, speed of communication. So basically, but you can use that to um, open up other um, industries to um, get you the benefit you, you desire. Okay. So um, in the aspect of the tech space, again, if I would ask, um, what do you think um, the tech can do to help improve um, development in Nigeria? Okay. In what regards? In terms of our economy, you know, right now the economy is going through a lot. So what can the tech industry, what can the tech, tech space tech, tech do, tech including the 5G network? Okay. And, okay. Yeah. The tech is doing a lot. I, I know because I know that. Within the last five years, there should be close to about $5 billion worth of investment into tech startups in this country. So you've, you've heard of the $400 million investment into a pay and other tech-based, um, maybe fintech and other technology-based, tech-based um, startups and companies. So tech is needed in the country. Tech is what opens you up to a whole different dimension. The, the biggest companies in the world right now are tech. Your Google, your Facebook, your Apple, your Microsoft, they're tech-based, and um, more tech solutions are coming up from this country. I can tell you right now, I hope you have a bigger valuation than your GTP bank has been here for about 20 years. Do you understand? So it's a tech-based solution. Uh, you understand? So um, tech gives you that access and opportunity to scale and open up yourself to 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 wider clients without the needed infrastructure traditionally as you need. So. Um, tech brings in a lot of resources, a lot of investments, and a lot of opportunities for everyone. So um, you start a company, you need maybe an IT person as employment. You need um, connectivity. There's also uh, um, investment into people um, that provide this technology to um, um, scale its, um, its coverage. So tech opens up different industries to thrive. Yeah. So investment comes in, the opportunities comes in, employment comes in, and other um, benefits. We're at a point where um, a lot of investors in Nigeria are going back to where they came from. Do you think this has grossly affects the tech space in Nigeria? Going back to where they came from? Yes, more like the investors out, out of the country are going back to their countries. Not necessarily tech-based companies, yes. I said, does has this affected the tech space in no, any no, form? Not necessarily, no, it hasn't. It hasn't. Tech, the tech space is still um, going, So we still yes. have investors investing sure, in tech sure, startups? Sure. It, it, it has dipped a while for the last two years, but it's still going strong. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what more can the government do for the tech industry in Nigeria? The um, yeah, better re re um, regulation and policies to, to help. So open up tech hubs around where people can just come in and learn, build, connect, grow. Those are necessary for 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 new ideas to, to take root. Many. Um, countries try to see that they invest into what the young the youth are doing. So yes, Nigerian to the need down other organizations are trying to do that, but more can be done, more investment can be done, more funding can be done to help the uh, people that are in that space to access those opportunities and do things that will benefit the country. Okay, so what exactly does the tech space need right now to grow? Just good policies, basically. Aside good policies from that, that need funding available. So you just need you just need good policies to to support it. So um, imagine when um, crypto was banned in the country, and, and I know a couple of country um, tech startups that had to fold or leave the country altogether. So policies and regulation also is uh, that thing that really hamper the growth of tech within the country. Yeah. So what do you see um, the face of tech in Nigeria com in the next ten years? We we are still at the um, initial stage. There are more, more going to come, more and more. More startups are just coming out each and every day. I, I know that for sure. And um, you'll see tech addressing several issues in the country, whatever it is. More issues within the country will be addressed by tech. And like I think we were discussing earlier, on, AI too will play a significant role into how people do things and how the lives of people go on daily. So um, tech will do a lot. Um, tech will actually, actually be one of the major 
contributor to the GPT of the country, as we as we say the the old So, um, the the government should be aware of that that tech is key, irrespective of other resources. Because yes, most times we are looking towards oil, but most countries are banning oil within the next decade. So we have to look for look at other resources and avenues to gain the needed revenue for the country to thrive. But do you think the government will open their eyes to the benefits that tech will bring to Nigeria? Well, I, I believe this government is a forward-looking government that wants to try innovative approaches to see that um, they succeed in the administration. So um, I hope that will come to reality. All right. So um, finally, on the um, 5G network, what do you think we should do better for um, its spread in Nigeria? Um, so if the if there are more subsidized approach as to getting those devices, be the router or being the mobile um, handle devices, I think that will easily help people to adopt the technology. So mostly, the standard of living in the country is quite um, um, high. Try as, as it is right now. So if those if that's not a concern to us people, they would easily adopt the technology. And so, what other means do you have that you would help us support care aside from the ones we've mentioned? What do that mean? Meets. Meets. If we want to adopt the 5G technology. Yes. So, um, yes, what's on this much more private um, investment? So, um, if other companies, for example, um, maybe the food manufacturer will say, okay, we are going to give out this phone and you have maybe um, a payment scheme so that you'd have to pay upfront or you need to pay for the devices and you can pay maybe within a given period of time as is done in Western climbs. So, I think that will also help people. Um, pursue obtaining these devices and see the spread of the technology. And then for the network providers? Uh, network, it, it, for them it's time. It's just a matter of time so for them to... Uh, infrastructure is not built in one day, so it takes time. So it's for just for, the, for them to continue what they're doing. I think, um, like I said, Abuja is um, maybe a good percentage of the populated area already covered by the 5G technology. So it's for them to just replicate that across board, across the country. and. I think that will be a success. All right. Thank you very much, John, for joining us in the studio today. Thank you very much. It was really lovely having you here. And that's all we'll be taking on the discussion segment. Next is the top 10 states using internet in Nigeria. Mm -hmm.